And joining me this evening to uh, make sense of what's going on in Russia in the studio is uh, Ambassador Arun Singh. He's India's former ambassador to the United States. And of course, he spent two terms in uh, Russia as well. He served there. With me also is uh, Neil Hauer. He's a Russia analyst joining us from Tbilisi in Georgia. And Gregory Pfeiffer, the executive director of the Institute of Current World Affairs and an author, is joining us from Washington. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you all for uh, joining us this evening. Um, if I could come to you, Mr. Pfeiffer, first up, is it safe to say that uh, this is more of a referendum on giving the president six more years in power than an actual contest uh, in the real sense of the word? Well, it's certainly not a uh, not a contest, as your uh, report has uh, stated very clearly and correctly. Uh, I'd also say it's not really a referendum because a referendum uh, would reflect the the views of Russian voters. Um, you've mentioned some of the uh, allegations of uh, voting uh, irregularities. Uh, the independent Golis, um, uh observer. Uh, group says that there are almost uh, 2,000 uh, regularities that they've already logged. But really, the, uh, the the main irregularity when it comes to talking about democracy is the massive propaganda machine uh, that is always uh, at work in Russia, the suppression of opposition politicians, um, and frankly, the foreign policy of Vladimir Putin, the very aggressive foreign policy, the uh, invasion of Ukraine and the annexation of Crimea, uh, bombing in Syria, uh, uh, meddling in Western elections, including the U.S. election last year, and now we have the uh, very recent uh, apparent poisoning of uh, a former uh, Russian intelligence officer, a spy for, for Britain. Right. Uh, and with this, uh, he is signaling that uh, uh, everything Russia is doing is about propping up uh, Vladimir Putin's rule. Okay, Neil, uh, all of those allegations, though, seem to be coming from, you know, other partners. They're not coming from within. And, and the, the more I've been reading about this election, it seems that although there aren't very many options to choose from, he still, I'm talking about President Putin, he still seems to be the number one choice. Would it be right to say that? Does he have some sort of appeal that overrides all of this criticism that he receives from other parts of the world? I mean, sure, you can say that, and it's, it's it's definitely the case that Putin has the the most popular support of any candidate, but that's hugely skewed in the fact that he's had all the administrative resources to pull together. He's a, the, by far the most media coverage, he's by far the most visible figure in the country, public figure. The only other politician, the serious politician who comes close, who's not part of the quote-unquote controlled opposition, which includes the Communist Party and Vladimir Zhirinovsky, these candidates who are largely seen as just existing to give the Kremlin greater and Putin greater legitimacy. The only other candidate, serious opposition candidate, was Alexei Navalny. And of course, he's been barred from running. He's been the subject of the massive concerted smear campaign over the last eight months. His activists have been harassed. And you, well, you can say Putin is the number one most popular person. This, the, the, this election really shows that his support is fading more from active to passive in terms of people are no longer enthusiastic about the elections. They're, they're no longer enthusiastic about six more years of stability. They've had 18 already. And now we've seen in a Lovato Center polling that this is the first time in many, many years that Russians are indicating that they prefer to see change over stability. All right. That's an interesting point of view, mm -hmm. uh, Ambassador Singh. But also this whole point about Alexei Navalny. Do you feel that his sidelining, uh, you know, he says that uh, all of the uh, allegations against him are trumped up. None of them are true. Um, has that made any sort of real impact on President Putin's, uh, you know, attempt at retaining power? Do you think that's had an impact? So from all the reports that have come, uh, Navalny has a certain set of dedicated followers. Uh, and But uh, their numbers seem to be limited. So although these allegations are there and he's from time to time posed a challenge, especially in the streets, uh, to President Putin, uh, I don't think it is really going to have a major impact on the elections themselves. Because again, if you look at the reports, they show clearly that a large segment of the Russian electorate supports uh, President Putin. Mm -hmm. And the younger generation, many of whom who are voting for the first time, they also support him because he's seen as somebody who's provided stability to the system. He's seen as somebody who's tried to resurrect Russia's important uh, role in international affairs. And he's seen as somebody who has stabilized the system after the collapse of the Soviet Union and tried to consolidate it politically and economically. And therefore, he does command a certain level of support. So while there is opposition, 
uh, I do believe that it will not impact on his prospects beyond a certain level. Okay. Um, let me go back to Gregory Pfeiffer on that note. Uh, Gregory, can I ask you, you know, this uh, this whole standoff uh, with the United Kingdom over the uh, alleged poisoning of uh, uh, Sergei Skripal, that of course has been uh, capturing news headlines for the last couple of weeks. But do you think it's come um, at an opportune time perhaps for President Putin because it's been able to push his uh, strongman agenda a little further? He's uh, really not blinked uh, uh, or uh, even allowed uh, any of the criticism that's come uh, Russia's way to make an impact in the statements he's made so far? Well, everything about this poisoning case uh, points that way. I mean, if you, look at the, if you look at the timing, it couldn't be more perfectly timed. Uh, there was a question after 2014 when uh, Putin annexed uh, Crimea uh, from Ukraine. Uh, what, what would he do next? This act uh, was a, a massive boost to his popularity. Um, Russians who live in, a, in an authoritarian, corrupt uh, system uh, whose r uh, real wages have declined more than 10% uh, over the last few years uh, have really uh, been motivated to support Putin, at least outwardly, by his nationalism, by his claim to have restored Russia's greatness, by his appeal to the nostalgia for, for uh, the lost uh, Soviet superpower status. Uh, and the annexation of Crimea was a great boost. Uh, many Russians uh, uh, polled by the by the Levada agency, the the, uh, the independent uh, polling agency in the in the country, uh, say that because of Crimea, Russia is now a superpower uh, once again. With the poisoning, uh, we now know uh, what Putin has has done to follow up on Crimea, and that is to wage a cold war against the, the West, uh, now Great Britain especially, in addition to the United States, and using these claims to say, I've restored Russian greatness, I'm the only leader capable of leading this country. Um, and these claims also often come along with um, claims that the 1990s, before Vladimir Putin came to power, were a period of chaos when the country was on the verge of falling apart. Right. Uh, and really, everything is about creating this image of Putin as the only national leader in the country. And Neil, would you say that that's perhaps one of the reasons why we've not seen President Putin campaign very much at all? Because it seems that the uh, whole messaging, uh, what, what Gregory just took us through, and of course this whole idea of uh, Russia being uh, sort of, uh, you know, under attack and in need of a strong protector, has that message somehow already struck a chord, which is translating into uh, the popularity that he seems to be enjoying at this point? Well, I mean, there, <clears throat> there's two thoughts that come to mind for me. Uh, hearing this 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 take on things, the first is that the, this idea of the, the the chaotic 90s and this traumatic experience that gave Russian society, yeah, it's 100 percent true, and it's something that you hear from Russians again and again talking to them, and it's something that people no one wants to go back to. But now we have, for the first time, we have voters coming into the system who are eligible to vote now, who have lived their entire lives under Putin, or who are at most two or three years old. These this cohort of people, essentially from 18 to say. 22, 23, who have remembered nothing but Putin. These people didn't live through the 90s. And now these are the sorts of people whose support base, uh, uh, who are forming the support base for figures like Navalny. And these people have seen nothing except, you know, they've seen the, the high point of it, which was 2008, around the time that oil prices peaked, uh, 2010, rather. And then they've seen that things have just stagnated and nothing's improved. And the, the, the stability that they've seen has just been uh, unimpressive or un underwhelming for them. And the second thing that comes to mind, I'm thinking about this idea of Russia being a great power. Yeah, the, the Crimea move was very popular. It was an easy one for Putin to do. It was people have, there was at least some sort of uh, narrative you could play on there with defending Russians in a neighboring state. But what we have going on right now is Syria. And Syria has been going on for three years now. The more I talk to Russians, the more I just keep hearing, why are we still in Syria? Why are we dying over there? There's, we've been told for three years the war is over. We're killing 100, 200 terrorists a day, and then yet still every night it's on the news and our guys are dying. There was this incident where 300 uh, Russian mercenaries were injured or killed in an attack on U.S. forces last right. month in Syria. And this was a big thing. These people came back in body bags, and now the funerals are happening. And it's, it's, this was month, one month before the election. So there is a lot more questions, I think, at this point for Putin than answers for his electorate. Okay, which is why I suppose the number of people that vote also makes such a difference. Of